Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Carla Sadek and you've tuned in to another episode of Sunday Night Live brought to you by lipomasis.com. And today's a special session because today we're going to be talking about skin aging and the treatments available and how to look out for it. So slightly slightly a different episode than usual, but definitely something to be uh, tuned in for and it's going to be very, very interesting. So if you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Carl Tadek and I specialize in the removal of cysts and lipomas and I have a very big interest in skin in general. A lot of you last week we discussed about skin routines, the kind of products that we look for uh, and the, the way they work and how to use them. So today we decided to, to dedicate the whole show to uh, understanding aging. Now, this is going to be the first of a number of discussions. Uh, they're going to be transmitted live. You're going to have questions at the end. So have your questions all lined up. We're not going to get too scientific, but it does contain a lot of scientific information, a lot of up-to-date data, which is going to be really, really useful. I'm going to take today's session right from the be beginning, uh, and then as we proceed, we're going to build up to bigger, bigger, bigger amounts of quantity. So no further ado, let's crack on. Let me um, get onto the main screen. Let's load up the presentation and let's begin. So we've got this charming lady here and she's going to be our host for today. So the discussion today is skin aging. Now, I don't know if you can see the first uh, slide we're going to be covering in, uh, in, in, in skin care, what is known as intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Now, the, the bottom line is there are some things that we can control and some things we can't control. So extrinsic factors, as the name suggests, are things that are external to the body. So things that we're exposed to the environment or things that we subject ourselves to. Now, those are in our control and those are modifiable. And uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on rather than the intrinsic, which is more about the genetics and the epigenetics, which we will cover, but not in this episode. Today, we're going to be discussing the modifiable changes that you can do to slow down the visible signs of aging. So look, the first thing we need to do is begin by having a definition, right? Now, when we uh, age, there is an inevitability to it. It's going to happen. It's gonna, it is a chronological episode of change that just keeps marching forward. So there's some of it that is outside our control, but there are, as we mentioned, some extrinsic factors that make it possible for us to kind of reduce the rate of aging or reduce the signs of aging. Now, the typical signs of aging that we discuss when, when I see patients are things like uh, dryness, increased wrinkling, loss of collagen, coarse texture. And in the scientific terms, these terms would be things like the cupus, uh, cutus rhomboidalis, uh, which is a change on the neck skin, it becomes more leather-like leather in its, in its um, appearance, and cuboidal. We've got some pictures of that coming up. We've, we've already spoken about dryness, but elastosis as well. The skin just becoming less lax. It becomes more saggy. There's less lax uh, elasticity in it. We've got uh, facial uh, lentigo, which are sc uh, sunspots, so hyperpigmented areas. What causes those? What accelerates it? Telangiectasia, the formation of blue, new blood vessels as well. So all of those we're going to look at uh, one by one. So the first one we spoke about was the the leathery-like appearance and the thickening of skin behind the neck. Now, this is uh, an example of that example of the, the cutis rhomboidalis. You can see it's a rhomboid shape on the neck where the individual kind of leans back. That skin has lost a lot of the elastin. The collagen has been degraded and there's a lot of thickening there. Um, now, the reason this happens when you have increased sun exposure is because one of the areas that we always forget to put sunscreen on is the back of the neck, and those are high-prone uh, areas for sun exposure. So you've got to be careful when you're putting your sunscreen. Make sure you do the back of your hands, your forearms, your shins, the back of your neck. These are areas that are commonly missed. And as you know, the more exposure you get to uh, high ultraviolet uh, radiation or infrared uh, radiation, then the damage to the DNA and subsequent 
uh, damage to the way the cells grow and the risk of malignancy increases. And so you've got to be careful. Make sure you put your sunscreen in the right places. So this is an example of cutis rhomboidalis, and it's at the back of the neck. Um, you've got this diamond-shaped um, furrows which are forming. Uh, loss of this elastic property, otherwise known medically as elastosis. Uh, let's move on. We've got uh, solar elastosis around the mouth. Now, the more you're exposed to the powerful rays of ultraviolet light, the more damage you're going to get to the, the dermis, the epidermis, and the, and the cells that compose that. In particular, we've got collagen that supports all of this skin layer. And ultraviolet light and infrared radiation all cause damage to the skin and cause it to have this cobble-like appearance where you've got these lines that goes down, they're thickened, um, there's increased wrinkling, there's more, the frowns are more pronounced. And on the face in particular, where you're constantly getting exposed to sun, and if we're not careful, well, these are the kind of changes that we get, what we call as photoaging. Okay, so these are the damage that happens to the skin as a result of the sun's rays, uh, photoaging. It's not photographs of aging, but it's actually the scientific word of light and its effect on the skin and how it appears to be aged. And so we move on. Brown spots, lentigos, we've all seen them. Um, now, obviously, I'm not saying that all brown spots on your hands are going to be, um, you know, lentigos, but... You've got to be careful, obviously, if, you, if, you, if you're worried about skin, see your skin specialist. But one of the signs of photoaging as a result of ultraviolet light is increased pigmentation. And you see these, you may have noticed it already, increased freckles on your face or your hands, large plaques of hyperpigmented areas. And in this particular picture, you see it on the hands in particular, because as I mentioned, one of the areas that we forget to put the, uh, the sunscreen is on the hands in particular. So in this picture, We've got uh, the lenti lentigo visible, um, and there's numerous examples of it there, different sizes. They appear to be coalescing into broader broader sort of plaques. Uh, they've got different colors in them. Some of them are darker, some of them are less dark. And these are all living within a very superficial level of the skin, right up into the car uh, carotenase uh, cells. So using the correct products, which we'll discuss a little bit later, you can try and reduce that photo damage and hyperpigmentation. Let's move on. Facial lentigo. Obviously, uh, it can be on the hands, it can be on the face. Um, and again, here we see this example of, 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 of about a five, three, five millimeter um, lesion developed gradually over many, many years. Uh, they're very, very thin. Um, they can appear gradually or they can erupt uh, a bit more um, suddenly, shall we say. They are benign, but obviously get it checked out. Make sure they are the benign lentigos because you can get lentigo malignant versions as well, much deeper in the skin um, and a bit more sinister. Okay. Uh, Telangiectasia, where well, we've seen a lot of that in some of the videos regarding cysts, especially the the, the bigger cysts, where they've been there for such a long time, you can start to see the blood vessels um, on the surface of the skin, uh, and it becomes very thin, um, and they produce this kind of like a spider's web, so uh, commonly known as spider veins um, on the surface of the skin. So there we go. So telangiectasia, also part of the image of uh, photo-aging skin. So we've got the uh, the cutis rhomboidalis on the on the back of the neck. We've got lentigos. We've got um, hyperpigmented lentigos. We've got telangiectasia. We've got wrinkles. We've got loss of collagen. And on the face, now there are certain areas on the face where you're going to start to see um, aging and wrinkling more than others. And uh, in this particular di uh, picture, we can see that they've got the, the deep the deep furrow forehead um, wrinkles we've got the crow's feet around the eyes we've got deep um, grooves in the glabella as well as well as these periauricular um, lines so these are the common locations that you'll find the signs of photo aging in uh, as we age so if you if you've got some of this then don't <laughs> don't despair because there are remedies but if you haven't 
this is where you should be applying your sunscreen in particular to try and reduce that uh, collagen from being damaged and losing the plumpness and the connective tissue underneath. So aging won't necessarily affect everybody, okay? In fact, we know that men seem to age uh, a lot quicker in terms of their skin than women. Um, and some of that could be down to hormonal uh, issues. Um, also know that things like the menopause and the use of HRT can also reduce the visible um, signs of aging. So there is a intrinsic factor that some of us can't control um, and not necessarily something we can um, prevent entirely, but there are elements of it that we can try and modify and slow down. And these will be the extrinsic factors and some of the modifiable uh, versions of those we'll be discussing a little bit later as well. Um, so in the last photo we saw, we saw the increased uh, wrinkles on the forehead, the crow's feet, the glabella, the periauricular wrinkles. Um, and it's also quite, quite interesting that uh, aging doesn't differ between skin color. Although there are certain ethnicities that have slightly uh, reduced rate of aging than other ethnicities. And in particular, the Chinese and Asian, they seem to have less of the wrinkles than um, <coughs> the rest of the uh, ethnicities out there. But skin color doesn't appear to have any difference in that at all. Okay, so on to modifiable risks. If you've got questions, make sure you do put them in the chat. I will get around to answering all of them at the end. We're gonna have a, a little question and answers uh, session. So don't be, uh, don't be afraid if I haven't given a big shout out to everyone who's watching. So we'll be doing that very, very shortly. Okay, so uh, modifiable extrinsic factors. So air pollution, would you believe it? Air pollution in its many forms is, uh, is a, not a noted cause of photo aging. And in particular, the use of fossil fuels, traffic uh, fume exhausts high in nitric oxide. Um, if you're cooking with solid fossil fuels, so not, not many people do s these days, but if you're, if you're cooking with wood or coal uh, and you're kind of exposed to that inside the, the kitchen, that's an issue. Smoke and secondhand smoke as well. So in the old days when uh, you were able to smoke in restaurants and clubs and theatres, uh, those who are kind of constantly working in the hospitality industry, uh, even though they didn't smoke, were also having um, aged skin, notable aged skin, just from passive um, exposure to it. And soot as well is going to be a, a, a nasty form of um, of, uh, a, of a externally modifiable um, factor of air pollution. Okay, And the main aging features that we get with air pollution are going to be things like the dispigmentation, so the lentigos, the wrinkling, um, they're associated with all types of air pollution. So if you're living in the inner city, you're likely to have, and, and you're living kind of like inner city with high exhaust fumes, lots of pollution, your skin quality is going to be a lot different to those who are living in the countryside as well. So just think about that. Um, let me know your stories. We're working a lot harder now towards making the environment a lot more sort of pollution free. Um, a lot of cities are now having... Um, Oh, uh, you know, ultra low emission zones in terms of uh, car pollutions and we've kind of banned fossil fuel burnings in most big cities. So another interesting modifiable factor is nutrition. Yeah, so um, it was been noted, you know, in the papers that those who have a diet high in amino acids getting healthier skin because ultimately your skin needs that nutrition, it needs those protein um, substrates to be able to build and replenish. And remember that the skin does sort of replace itself every 40 to 50 days and it's an overnight process. Uh, so there's a constant turnaround where the cells from the bottom of the skin, they start to differentiate, they mature, they rise up to the surface, these keratotinocytes, they rise to the surface and then they give you that, uh, that stratum the different levels of thickness in the uh, epidermis that produce that barrier, that oily barrier. And so as they rise up and they shed, fresh um, cells are constantly being made. So having a nice, healthy supply of amino acids from a good diet is going to be absolutely critical for that. Okay. Alcohol. Now, alcohol is a big one. Um, it's, it's still out for contention. The literature that I've reviewed hasn't been conclusive. They haven't said yes or no. It's kind of anecdotal. But 
you know, it's kind of edging towards that potentially that uh, the alcohol could increase your your risk to uh, wrinkling. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. If, you, if you've got friends who don't drink and you compare those to friends who do drink, let me know. Alcohol, how does it, how does it fit in all of this? Uh, and smoking. We mentioned smoking in the air pollution, but also those who smoke as well. So if you're smoking, and this is dose dependent, so the more you smoke, the longer you smoke, the worse the outcome is. And that's across all of those aging criteria that we've mentioned. Uh, so dry, dull skin, premature skin aging, hair loss, uneven skin tone, slow healing. For us, when we do the surgeries on people, we always tell the smokers to stop smoking while they're healing because the nitric oxide in the smoke takes away the binding capacity of red cells to deliver the oxygen to the wound and slows down the healing process. So smoking is a big, big no-no. Um, it's dose response. Uh, response is clear. The more you smoke, the more wrinkles, the more sagging, the more leathery skin. It's all bad. So reduce your smoking just to look good, if nothing else. Now, the big one, the ultraviolet exposure. Now, this is a difficult one because obviously we live on planet Earth and we're exposed to sunlight every day <laughs> uh, and uh, not so much at night. So, ultraviolet light is a powerful form of radiation and, and if you're living close to the equator or you're having a big summer, those rays can penetrate really deep into the dermis of the skin and basically increase a lot of the stress, lots of the oxidative stress, as we like to call it, within the skin that causes the increased breakdown of collagen, which causes the sagging skin and the increased wrinkles. And the more sun exposure that you have throughout the day, the more that photo damage is going to do. Um, and not just photo damage in terms of wrinkling skin, but also increase the risk of skin cancers. And if you've if you've got, had a previous skin cancer and you continue to expose yourself to more ultraviolet right, light, then you're going to be at greater risk of developing more cancers because that is the long-term damage of um, ultraviolet light. Now, there are ways to uh, reduce that, and the obvious one is sunscreen. And that really helps to knock out the ultraviolet light. And if you apply it in the morning and throughout the day, uh, you're reducing those ultraviolet lights, damaging the elastase, the collagen, reducing that pigmentation that is happening in the keratinocytes on the surface of the skin. Um, but there's also ways to try and heal the skin. Um, the most common uh, options are antioxidants. So... Antioxidant, antioxidant serum, apply that in the morning, let that settle for an hour, put the sunscreen on. Um, and of course, there's lots of them out there. Um, vitamin C is, 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 is one, um, but you've also got the uh, nine minute. <coughs> uh, you've got the uh, retinoids, your, your retinoids out there. So your dapalene, which can be uh, purchased over the counters, you can use that straight off. Um, so I would use those in the morning. Put your sunscreen on top and then that's it. Leave the antioxidants on there and then continue using the sunscreen as the day progresses. Um, so there we go. Um, now, let's see what else we've got here. Ah, questions. Let me have some questions from you. Let's go to the, uh, the chat bot. Let's load that up. Give me a moment while we just work this out. Uh, okay, that's that's a little bit slow, but let me um, let's let's see if we can load that up. I do apologise. There we go. Chatbot is on. Let's have a look. Let's look at all the questions that are coming through. Let's uh, let's read some of these out. Let's get the main camera on. There we go. All right. So let's scroll up to the very top. Let's have a big shout out. So Octavia Ventura, welcome. Uh, Shelly S, welcome. Uh, thunderstorms in uh, in Virginia. Interesting. Janet, welcome. T by 12, strong rains. A lot of the rains going on in Texas at the moment. Uh, Dennis Grant, uh, very windy in the French Riviera. Wishing everybody well in the United Kingdom. Uh, Doretta, hi from Canada. Welcome. Welcome. Chris, welcome. 
Uh, Janet Bailey, welcome. Rowan, welcome. Sulalali, welcome. Charmaine, welcome. Linda from Seattle. Sherry, welcome. Jackie, welcome. Amazing. Dr. Sarah's in the house. Brad Lucas, are we live? I hope we're live. Loving the shirt. Thank you. Uh, Sherry, Sherry, Tracy, Charmaine, Terry, uh, Vera, uh, Belinda, welcome. Audrey from Northumberland, welcome. Tracy Larson, where's my practice located? It's in London. Uh, just check us out at lifepemesis.com. Uh, Alessandro, welcome from Chile. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great turnout. Let's have a look. Let's see if we've got some questions. Uh, Destiny says, I'm finally here. Absolutely love uh, Dr. Sadek. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. So great turnout. Uh, let's have a look. Let's take some questions from the floor. Let's have a look. Uh, any questions? Let's take a look. Uh, so Sarah says she always uses SPF 50. Brilliant. Let's scroll up a bit more. Uh, what do I think of the huge skin peels? Uh, okay, skin peels. That's a good one, Paige. So skin peels are these sort of chemical abrasives like hyaluronic acid that you can apply. No, I wouldn't apply it every day. You're probably looking at it once or twice a week. Um, and it just helps to kind of re level out the skin, make it a lot smoother, take off the damaged keratinocytes, uh, and allow for fresh skin to kind of replenish and heal. Uh, the thing to bear in mind with the chemical peels is that if they, they do leave your skin a little bit sensitive, especially for the first 24 hours afterwards. And so you might notice some redness. And if you're out in the sun, you've got to be putting the SPF 50 on there as well to help protect it. But yeah, a chemical peel, absolutely um, worth checking out once, once or twice a week. But of course, in combination with maybe like an adapalene, a, vit a retinoid, um, like a vitamin A to help um, encourage the skin to reform. Now, with the retinoids, best put those at night because that's when the skin is multiplying. So that would be your nighttime uh, treatment. So you've got your your um, retinoids, your adapalene on over the counter and in prescriptions. You can get your antioxidants like CoQ10, uh, your vitamin Cs. Um, all on the morning routine so that that's that's there let's have a look some people say the sun helps uh, t-cell production and should not put on sunscreen what do you think well absolutely so uh, the, the 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 sun is a big energy source and the only way your body is able to make vitamin d which is an integral part of your immunity of which t-cells play a part in is to harness those energy packets that are coming from the sun, okay? And what we what what we do is we use that massive photon of energy that's coming from the sun. We capture it in the skin and we use it to break cholesterol to form vitamin D. All right. There's no other way to naturally make vitamin D unless you're using the sun's energy because the chemical reaction needs a lot of energy, and subsequently the vitamin D is then part of the immune pathway such as t-cells now sunscreen is not going to block out uh, that energy source it's not going to block out that total energy source that the body can use to change cholesterol into vitamin d all right so you're not going to get rickets or become vitamin d deprived from using sunscreen sunscreen doesn't last for a long time it's only blocking out the ultraviolet uh, rays so the infrared radiation just per passes straight through that so in a way that it, it doesn't block out um, the more potent um, radiation from the sun. The sun, you know, like the infra infrared radiation can really damage uh, the collagen. Um, it's not stopped by sunscreen. Um, it increases the oxidant stress, the uh, production of free radicals that cause the increase of, um, of, uh, of collagen destruction and inhibits collagen synthesis. So it's a double whammy. And the only way really is to kind of think about the antioxidants that we spoke about. The, so the, the CoQ10, the vitamin Cs, um, those kind of products, uh, resveratrol as well. So vitamin D is not going to, the production is not going to come, it's not going to come to a grinding halt with the use of sunscreen. So I hope that clears it up. But great question. Uh, let's scroll through. 
Siji says, uh, alcohol is very inflammatory. Absolutely, absolutely. Smoking is very bad, Sulalali. Uh, Rusty says she's 54 years clean and sober and nine years smoke free. Good on you, Rusty. Your skin must be looking amazing. Uh, congrats, Ginny. Welcome. Uh, Destiny says, um, I have the ones from alcohol, the spider, uh, Nevi, absolutely. Uh, she's She's got it on her face, I'd imagine. Let's scroll through some more questions. Question from Sid G. Uh, question, have you talked about pigmentation and how to get rid of it? Sorry, I came late. Uh, so, chemical peels, they're a great way of getting rid of um, pigmentation. Uh, retinoids as well, used at night. So, you could do is a chemical peel to try and get rid of some of the, the dead skin. Um, and then you can use a retinoid as well at night time to help increase cell turnover and production. So encouraging those um, keratinocytes that are containing the pigments to be shed and that the fresh uh, cells come up from the stratum up to the surface um, nice and healthy. Um, Tanya uses Effidex. She's used it a few times to get rid of sunspots. Absolutely, another, another great option. Let's have a look. Uh, I've read that you need at least 20 minutes per day in the sun for vitamin D. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you need sun exposure probably on a daily, um, on a daily routine uh, because your vitamin D naturally starts to drop, especially as we enter the winter months. Um, now, a normal vitamin D level, you're talking something in the range of what we would describe here between 15 and 150 um, units per millimole. And it's not uncommon for that level to really go down very, very sharply in winter. And you come out of winter and it's like on 10 and 5 and you have to have a treatment course of vitamin D, which is available. Um, the, if, if, you're, if you're suffering from vitamin D deficiency, you've got to have a, a rapid correction. So it's about 20,000 units every couple of days, six-week course. And that helps to kind of boost it up. Uh, and then you switch it over to a maintenance course of about 2,000 units daily. So once your vitamin D is above 50, 75, you can then go straight on to the maintenance dose. Uh, everybody needs to be on a maintenance dose during winter uh, if you're not going to get any sunshine, especially in the northern hemispheres. So yeah, vitamin D, absolutely vital. Uh, Sid G says, didn't know that cholesterol had anything to do with vitamin D. Well, there we go. Brilliant. What about a combination of ultrasound, electric therapy, and elasticity, and uh, decreasing wrinkles? Absolutely. We'll discuss that in the next talk. So I don't want to jump the gun yet. We're going to save that, but we will talk about that. Um, I see a bunch of folks clean and scrub. Uh, I have a number of uh, DAATs herself. Best decision I've ever made. Excellent, excellent. Uh, can you name a, a good brand for face creams that work on helping with wrinkles? I have saggy uh, skin under the eyes. Any help? Ginny, watch the next episode. So today we're going to cover the science because next episode we're going to go into products. We're going to bring some products in-house. We're going to see how they how they use. What are the scientific data behind them? What are their key ingredients? And do they actually work? Um Let's have a look. Very rarely do I go outside the house in the sun. I don't use sunscreen, says Sherry S. Um, Sid G says, I've heard you use vitamin K and vitamin D together. Uh, no, that's not true. No, you don't need um, vitamin K. Let's scroll through some more. Uh, which cream, uh, Dr. Sadiq, would you recommend for day and night? Yeah, so, yeah, thanks. So, I think, look, by the day, you've got to be thinking about the antioxidants and the sunscreen, okay? And by night, you're going to be thinking about the vitamin A's, the retinoids. Um, and you also might want to think about a moisturizer as well. Remember to put the sunscreen throughout the day. And if you're using a peel... Make sure to, you know, protect as well for the first 24 hours. All right. Okay, that's that was great. First episode of uh, of the non-popping. I hope you all found it useful. Uh, it was certainly a lot of fun. Uh, the first introduction on skin aging. Um, we'll do products and a bit more on um, how they work next week as well as some of the other stuff that people are mentioning like 
microneedling, ultrasounds, electrotherapy, and all of those as well. So make sure you join me next week, uh, same time, Sunday Night Live at 9.30 Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, until then, put your sunscreen on. <laughs> Don't forget to moisturize. And I'll catch you on Sunday next week. Take care. Bye-bye.